to death do us part is what she promised me. Now to the left is where she wants me to be. The first and last dates were total opposites. Now on another mister's lap is where she wants to sit. Two straws out of one cup of vodka with him she sits. They come home and gives me what's left of what he said. I give her an option, him or I. I tell her we were made for each other because in another life she was my husband and I was her wife. After all we went through, she's given up on my love. She says she had love for money, but it wasn't enough. Now I truly know the meaning of money can't buy me love. What I thought we shared was never there, always absent when I throw money in the air. I can still smell her scent roaming in the air. Grease stains on my pillowcases from her nappy hair. Tears on my pillow from her abandoning me. Just one more chance between her legs is where I dream to be. Now I have to dream of her the rest of my life. A living example of why they say you can't turn a hoe into a housewife. As she sits at the edge of his bed, her breasts in shame are shown. Her head hangs low with guilt and regret as she tries to let the situation sink in. He is getting dressed near the closet when his anxiety attack hits. He stares at her with tear-filled tear eyes. He feels like a wuss because guys don't cry. He is flushed with memories of his ex. Not the one that sits in front of him on his unmade bed, but the ex that doesn't deserve any other recognition besides the fact that she is simply an ex. She stares at him helpless yet calm as she caresses his back. She knows that the attack will soon pass because there have been no before. Her poor mind rapidly races with wild thoughts of how he and I can make it work this time. But this quick sex to fill both their lonely voids only creates thick awkwardness that can't be destroyed. A love triangle with no happiness at any point to gain, simple temptation is all we can blame. She still remains the same strong woman five years after constant games, sweet, genuine, loyal, and broken. And he remains the same young boy, confused, manipulative, selfish, and lonely. She follows her heart and disregards her head, and he buries his heart and thinks only with his head, the wrong head. The head that only knows the part of saw, not right or wrong. But the bond that these two share is like none ever known. And regardless of how little at times will be shown, they are connected by one single bone, his rib. His rib that protects his frozen heart and the rib that bears a beautiful soul staring back at him from the cloud of pillows and blankets on his bed. From the outside looking in, you'll never understand. But from the inside looking out, it's indescribable how she can love such a man. Ballerina dance with me, twirl around so carefully. Ballerina take me into the world of ribbons, of tutus, and love and dancing. Take me to your world of magic tonight. Every little girl wants to be a ballerina. Every girl wants to dance. I want to be a ballerina because then he would want me again. Ballerina dance with me, leap about so gracefully. Ballerina hold me close, let me know that I can go home. When nobody wants you to come home, then why come home at all? Sorry, I'm having wind issues. Um, when nobody loves you, why love anything except for dancing in my own secret world? Ballerina dancer, take me away to your world of magic tonight. Yelling, screaming, he always acts so harsh. I never scream back, for I am too afraid. Instead, I dance away and never come home again. I hold these tears inside. Ballerinas do not cry. Not when their feet ache. Not when their legs break. Not when they are yelled at. Not when they can never go home again. He only loves me because I am his ballerina. If I stop dancing, he will love me no more. If I grow older, then I'll stop dancing. Then I will be alone. I'll be, we, I will be all alone forevermore. So ballerina dancer, take me in your arms tonight. Ballerina dance with me, never let me go. And I will dance forever until he loves me once again. I kind of get caught up in the moment talking to the bartender and the lawyer, mingling with my friends. She's not too familiar with the place, not too familiar with the people. She clears her throat as I laugh softly at a joke old dead parent just told. I turn towards her, I can tell she feels forgotten. I give her a smile of how could anyone forget? She smiles back, my arms are open, and she lands in them perfectly filling up the space. She sips her wine and laughs, only for the sake of being accepted. How could someone not accept her? The night carries on with little worry. We leave, we're silent, but we are together. Again, she clears her throat. I can tell she feels forgotten. And somehow being on the dashboard, I try to put my heart into hers. So in case she's forgotten, I will be forgotten too, forgotten together.
I know you're probably tired of seeing me here, but this is the last one. Probably be tired of seeing you there. Um, this one's called Tears on Fire. Watching myself fall back onto the heated railroad tracks, I hear the whistle of the train, calling softly, you're insane. I close my eyes and feel the speed, the pain within my heart to bleed. I could still pull forward, I could step into life, but I can no longer stand the, stand the stab of your verbal knife. I open my eyes one last time to watch the shadow crowd, only to see you standing by, laughing all too loud. My heart explodes, my mind implodes, my tears turn to fire. What can I do? I miss my cue. I can go no higher. I feel the wheels like giant heels stomping on my chest. I feel my vessels crushed and split. I need not explain the rest. All I can think through shattered thoughts is of the one I had long sought. The laugh is still ringing in my hollow ears, echoing in the embers of my tears. The train passes by, now stained, now stained red, but it doesn't matter. I was already dead. My spirit awakens to walk among the tracks taking one final moment to once again look back. And there you are, smiling still, as if you were the one who went in for the kill. I try to believe I see a tear in your eye, but I know that is a dream that also will soon die. I stare at you silently and hear you say, it's fine if you hate me, I'm glad you're gone anyway. I shake my head, no, that's not true. Hate is something I could never do. But you can hear me as I fade far above, whispering softly, though I wish I couldn't love. You are not broken yet, not tied to ink tears, not choked by the choke, by the smoke that has left you here. You are not done being the men you ought to become. And nobody knows like you know the hunger that contorts itself into a fist, the, pu the punch that blows your mind to shame, or how expensive it is, the price you pay to get ahead in the game. You are not broken yet, though you stand on shifty ground in this place where only dragons and daggers come around. That Buddha pride has got you by your balls, leading you down her self-destructive halls, and your golden grin is growing hollow. Nobody showed you how to lead, so you're left to follow. Us women, we say you have failed us, passed us around and sucked us like blunts, showed us all your macho stunts, reduced our beauty down to kinds. Perhaps we failed you too, raised our daughters to beware of you, always expecting you to be untrue, kind of leaves you with nothing else to do. And you are our men. When you rise, we stand with you, but when you fall, we join the hands that twist you. But men, you are not broken yet, left to your own devices. You've come, to fa you've come face to face with your own crisis. Cold and hard like ice is. Anger, the only regimen that suffices. Soft, quiet yourself and rise. Alert the night to your cries, for the God of truth supplies, and it is only a broken man that fortune denies. I cannot write you, not like I'd like to. I only have Saturdays. I only have songs rented out of someone else's love. You must take my words with you. I think you keep them when I cannot stay because you know I will come back to find them. Written on your chest, pouring out your palms, stroke my hips again and there will be the first stanza. The words are imploding my back into an arch above you. I've only had one Sunday morning. My words need more to deliver. The poetry of distance is deceiving. Words don't tease the tongue, they play the page. The in-between pawns us out to the night, and we fold into our beds as if the pillows will suffice. The air around is strangled into longing. I just want the right words to say it, but they are insufficient. The alphabet is too incomplete. I can't write me half as beautifully as you see me. There aren't words swollen enough with passion to pucker into a kiss worthy of the moment. We leave too many messages walk too many streets without a hand to hold. I cannot write this poem. It has already written me. It is slowly writing us into a story of one summer when the words began to change, the hand that writes them, the page that receives them, the eye that reads them. The poetry has claimed us. We belong to her now.